Okay. Um, okay, hi everybody. I I think we have everybody but Ashwin and Sarah Swartz here, but I've sent an email back to the group. So hopefully if they're available, they will join. Um, so let's jump right in. Given our delay here um, with the minutes, does anybody want me to share them on the screen or are they looking at them themselves? Everybody okay? And Jesse, remind me, did you take these minutes or was it Steve? It was me, Steve. Okay. Um, so then Jesse, you're on deck to take minutes. Is that okay? Great. Who thumbs up? <laughs> it is okay. I do need to stop at 630, um, as I assume other people do as well. Okay. We will make sure that happens. I was going to move to accept the minutes, but since I wrote them, maybe I'm not supposed to. I'll leave it to somebody else. I move to accept the minutes. Great. I'll second that. Perfect. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so I think we need to do a roll call. So I'll just call based on who I see on my screen. First being myself, Drocker, yes. Uh, Rose? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Selman? Yes. Roof? Yes. I'm, I'm counting with you. <laughs> Say my name. Yeah, Sarah. Yes. And Dwayne? Um, I guess I'll abstain because I missed most of the meeting. Okay, great. So I think that is... 601. Um, yes, and two absent. Great, so let's move on to, um, don't believe, we don't have any public here. So, um, and Stephanie is on vacation this week, so we don't have any staff updates. So we'll move straight to ECAC member updates. Yes, Darcy. Uh, I just would report that um, Laura sent a letter, uh, an email to the GOL committee about the town manager evaluation. Um, and I think you all got a copy of that. Um, so I do not know what happened at the, at the GOL meeting following. So I need to read the minutes and figure out whether they, how they incorporated what we suggested or if they incorporated it into the town manager evaluation guidelines. Yeah, I don't think I got any response from that email, so be good to know. Okay. Thanks, Darcy. Um, anyone else have updates? I have one other update. One is that um, I've been working with the Zero Waste Amherst group and um, we ended up uh, asking the town manager and Guilford Mooring if they would um, ask for a DEP um, grant to look to compare um, systems, hauling systems um, in Massachusetts and around the US and it was approved. It was just approved yesterday. So that is going to be happening. And so what we will be able to look at the results sometime in the next probably six or eight weeks. 
So that that could that could contribute to the to the transportation slash waste dash public health group, <laughs> possibly. Great. Are they going to hire a consultant to do that research? Uh, there actually is already an existing Western Mass um, recycling person who her job is to carry out these DEP grants. Mm. So her name is Veronique Blanchard, and so she actually helped write it, and um, she's very excited about looking at Boulder and Portland and a lot of different places to compare hauling systems. Great. That might be of interest to the colleges as well. Probably, maybe not UMass, but the other ones. Um, I you know they're looking at that too. Um, so, great. Anybody else? Um, sort of unrelated, but uh, just acknowledge the um, really nice um, coverage that the town had and the university had nationally on uh, PBS NewsHour last night. Not sure if anybody else covered it. It was, wasn't energy related, but it was COVID related. Mm -hmm. um, but a pretty nice segment. Um, Paul Bachelman was on, um, the chancellor, um, the um, chamber of commerce person for Amherst, I forget her name, um, and, and, and quite a few others. It was pretty uh, surprising. I didn't know what was happening. We were watching and hey, <laughs> nice, nice views of the town. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can just add that um, Laura, Laura, Stephanie and I did present to um, the town council last week, just very quickly an update on where we were. Um, I think Darcy said it was the longest meeting you all have had maybe or one of the longest. So it was very quick and dirty. Um, but you know, we just reminded them of what we were doing and that we will be coming back to them towards the end of the calendar year with a report and some budget ideas based on the work we're doing now. Great. Um, so let's dive right in to the task group co-chair debrief. So, um, I think I'll first turn it over to Jim and Lauren to see if they have anything they want to add holistically and Gazekaya as well. Um, but then I think it would also be helpful to have each of the co-chair groups sort of go through their thoughts. And I don't know if we should do that first or if you have something to say first. Lauren, I'll let you jump in and Gazekaya. Sure, um, I think we're just really excited to um, hear from the co-chairs in terms of the themes that you are all noticing coming out in the conversations, talk about overlaps between the different groups. And, um, and then I know that that will uh, lead into the later conversation around what the ECAC can be doing concurrently. So we'll save that for after. Um, but I think that's sort of what we were hoping for as part of this conversation. Um, Zikaya, did you want to add anything to that? I'm not sure if they're able to. They're not <laughs> muted, so. Oh, okay. It just took me a minute to get there, sorry. Oh, that's um, okay. No, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we did, yep. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, and just also that, uh, um, you know, there were notes that you got out of the meetings, uh, the, the notes are reasonably comprehensive, uh, and um, uh, and so you know should be used for uh, as uh, as resources for uh, for the co chairs. Okay, great. So why don't we um, let each of the co chairs maybe take about ten minutes to talk about their meeting? Um, some thoughts, key takeaways, any feedback for next time. 
and then we can roll that into a next steps discussion. Um, which group went first? I think the land use group. Okay, that would be me. Um, let me just get my windows organized. Yikes, where'd it go? There it is. Um, so I can see. Okay, so we had, I, th I guess it looks like a pretty good attendance list compared to some of the others. It seemed to me not that many community members. There's a lot of us associated with the committee and the consulting group. Um, and then and, and, uh, Dave Zomack from the town of Amherst, as you can see, uh, to a farmer, Bernard Brennan from Amethyst Farm, Mark Wemsley, um, and then several other uh, folks, as you can see up there. Um, we did have translation, so we had to um, say, speak in short, relatively short bursts, and then it was translated um, to, I believe, a person on the phone. So that, that, uh, took a little time and we didn't, weren't able to go back and forth on communicating quite as much. We started with an exercise on imagining um, outdoor spaces that we like. That was the uh, leading up in the values there and that's uh, summarized so we, we all had a chance to kind of talk about some of our places that we wanted to, that we liked to visit. I guess that was, sorry, that was a little further down in the agenda. Um, we did talk about our values there with a lot of attention and, and people speaking about the value of outdoor spaces that are local, cl close, accessible. Um, and typically that meant in the backyard <clears throat> for some people, it meant within close driving distance for those with cars and, or it could have been in, in the neighborhood for some folks. So kind of a neat list of places that people like, but in general, people liked outdoor places. <clears throat> quiet, um, trees, perhaps a river. Those are features that people spoke about. Um, there was a mention of getting the kids interested and connected to outdoors and maybe we could do more of that. Um, how to grow things, how to fish, and, that, um, and, and how to uh, and learn more. That was another thread. So how do I learn more about outdoor spaces and conservation land that's accessible? Um, some people were confused. They weren't sure if all conservation land was publicly accessible or not. And it turns out not all conservation land is publicly accessible. Um, the town, Stephanie pointed out, does have a great map with lots of well-marked trails. So that's something that could be easily um, promoted, the existing map that the Conservation Department has created. Um, yeah, going on, I, I think you can see in the minutes there, this. Um, I we identified the principles, um, more connecting to nature um, of all sorts, um, perhaps more programs. People seem to like that, community gardens, bird watching. There could be uh, um, opportunities there for some existing nature organizations like the Hitchcock Center, uh, that was mentioned many times, um, to do even more outreach. Um, they, they are continuing to do a few programs in this day and age, um, but not nearly as much as they normally would be doing. Uh, barriers, um, working to, to dismantle barriers, transportation, um, liabilities for property owners about having people walking on their land, um, and physical access, whether that's a bridge or a map that tells people where the trails are. Um, Moving along there, there was one mention uh, from one of the farmers about a way to perhaps enhance, uh, uh, encourage the things that we want, and that would be carbon sequestration. That would be, could we have payments to farmers for farming carbon, sequestering carbon in the soil? Um, there was also a note to be careful or, or um, thoughtful about citing renewables like solar um, and taking into account the value of farmland and forests and not to, um, harm one thing that we're trying to protect while we're trying to protect something else. Um, yeah, then we went into the conversation of this uh, favorite outdoor places. That was fun. A lot of neat places that people mentioned. And Mill River, Groff Park was very popular. Amethyst Brook, very popular. Um, even the cemetery in downtown um, was mentioned as a, as a peaceful place. 
Okay, so then the homework questions and um, the I was able to ask or talk with a couple of people that I know of. They're not in town, so it's a little biased, but one friend has a vegetable garden. They grow their own vegetable. Sorry, the homework question, as you can see at the bottom of the, our minutes there, ask two or three neighbor or friends, where do they get their vegetables? Can they grow their own food where they live? Do they have access to land or outdoor areas where they live? Two people that I talked to, one does grow their own vegetables. Both have access to a lot of land that they live up in Leverett and Shutesbury, so it's even more um, rural than Amherst. And they're also quite familiar with the access of vegetables and farmers markets and local markets as well as conservation areas. So that's probably for at least my aspect of the homework, not a very representative um, sampling, particularly for town residents. But those are my neighbor or my friends at least. Any, any questions um, on our conversation from you guys? Steve, what do you think you learned out of the process? Oh boy. Um, I guess you know, I learned that, that people use the conservation land, they value the conservation land, and at least in some level, they want to use it more. They want to grow their own food. I don't know how many of the people that were in the conversation have actually grown their own food, but they would like to. They like the idea of it at least. So I think there's a lot that we and conservation department and environmental education centers could do to help connect residents to the land and natural resources that we have. Yeah, great. Yeah, Steve, is there anything else that comes to mind around um, coming out of that conversation, priorities that you saw emerging or um, things that were unexpected that you feel like now we probably want to think about? Um, <laughs> not coming to my mind, but that almost sounds like a leading question that perhaps you had something that you remember from the conversation of that sort. I understand. Yeah, uh, I see how it could have sounded that way, but I promise it wasn't meant to be. I was oh, okay. just curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, people like the idea of protecting the land, protecting the, the semi-rural character, the farmland, the forests. They liked the idea of protecting that, and as well as the particular resources that they're familiar with, whether it's Puffer's Pond or Mill River, Groff Park. Um, they liked that. They wanted more of that. Yeah, I, I definitely second the um, the idea that more engagement with natural areas was such yeah. a common theme. Yeah, and I especially guess for youth, as you mentioned, that the people living in the apartment complexes, even though in some cases they're fairly close to conservation areas and trails, they may not be aware of them or uh, know about them or know that they can go hiking and and enjoy the natural environment in those places. Something I'm taking from your overview, Steve, is definitely a theme of education um, or awareness. I don't mean education may not be the right word. Awareness building and making sure things are accessible. But I think it also highlights that you know when and if we move forward with more renewable projects in town, that we're educating around. Well, that we're being thoughtful about what land is being used. And that we're educating around, you know, whatever trade-offs or other things we would need to consider for that. Yes, yes, I think that's very important. Um, a comment that I made, and I'm not sure, I, I didn't mention it just now, and I'm not sure if it's clear in the minutes, is that things are changing. Our natural environment is changing. Our forests are changing. Our farm fields are changing. And people may not like the changes that we are going to be facing in the coming decade. Um, so the things that we know and that we love now, it's probably not possible to preserve them as they are, or even maybe there are ways we can make them better, but they are going to be changing. So we have to also help people appreciate what's there, appreciate they have changed in the past and they will change even more in the future. Yeah, I was uh, the the one thing that uh, that I was uh, 
surprised at and surprised is probably the wrong word, but I was uh, it it really opened up some thoughts for me in that uh, meeting was the the uh, concept of sort of uh, sort of where things are relative to where people are mm -hmm. and um, kind of how that works uh, and that that works for as it, it, we were talking about it especially around natural resources uh, both you know things like uh, uh, brooks and streams for fishing and conservation land for walking and and taking kids into and stuff like that as well as food growing and uh, as well as the sort of um, renewable uh, energy development and things like that 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 uh, there was a, a very strong perspective of um, sort of access to things, especially natural resources, is kind of tricky unless you have a car. And even if you have a car, you kind of got to know what's going on. And, uh, and that there's a sort of an interesting opportunity to rethink that. And I think that, uh, uh, what's his name from Kestrel, uh, uh, Mark, um, uh, sort of said it, said the sort of the sort of awakening moment well when he sort of said, oh, uh, uh, you know, it's interesting. I never really thought about conservation land being where people are as opposed to conservation land being somewhere else. And that that was, that was kind of a, an aha moment for, for them. Um, so. Great. Um, so that that was 10 minutes. Um, so let's maybe move on to the next group and then we can come back at the end and see if there's any overarching themes. Um, so what group was next? Electricity, I believe. Yeah. So um, we uh, had a, a nice kind of small group, you know, there were the six of us <laughs> and um, we had three very active um, community members um, who spoke a lot, thanks to Izzy Kaya and Jim's um, uh, facilitating it. And um, three others who, who were part of the committee task group um, and we spent after you know the in, intro to you know framing why we're here and all that um, we almost exclusively talked about the first question <laughs> which was how do you heat and cool your home and who who controls it um, you know, what control do you have over it? And people talked at length uh, about their situations and their very different situations. A condo owner, uh, two renters, three renters, um, and um, you know, one person who's got their own solar and um, you know, has the choice to, to choose what kind of heating system, uh, although hasn't yet. Um, and he mentioned feeling kind of guilty about that. Um, and the, the whole tone of the conversation was really very personal, really, uh, you know, people sharing more than information, but, but how they felt about um, the choices they have and don't have. And um, it, it was, I think, a very successful conversation in, in, in terms of hearing from all parts of our community. Um, so I, I was very happy about that. And um, I 
I think it was pretty compelling to think about the um, energy justice issues and and how that will be a really important piece of um, in our prioritizing what kinds of programs, projects, um, direction we want to go. Dwayne? Yeah, I can add to that and, and, and thanks Andre for that uh, perspective, which I agree with. I thought it was, um, <clears throat> um, well, a couple, a couple comments, some are more critical than others, I guess, or at least more, more suggestive of um, maybe um, where we can go with the next two meetings. Um, and um, that is, I thought, you know, th this process is very important um, uh, to really engage with the um, cross section of constituents we have in, in, in town. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, not only are we um, uh, want to be true and we are being true to um, those issues and concerns and those goals um, of this um, effort and, and ultimately the plan, uh, but also uh, really important to have these voices with us um, as we um, uh, put the plan forward and, and, and move the move to action uh, after the plan. So I I'm, um, really thought it was um, effective and uh, hearing from the voice of, of um, a, a pretty wide distribution of, of uh, well, let me say a, a very small sample size <laughs> uh, compared to the town, a very small sample size, but nonetheless, a pretty um, broad distribution of, um, uh, of, of people from, um, uh, you know, renters, low income, um, ethnic uh, people of color, um, and those that are probably uh, some, uh, one at least that may be amongst the most wealthy in town, um, and, and, and some in between. Um, and so I think, thought it was pretty helpful. I thought there was some, I wouldn't say tension, but some sort of like, um, uh, um, issues with regard to haves and have nots. And I, I don't, I'm not sure if that's quite helpful um, because we want to be inclusive of everybody and, and uh, people of means um, actually have a lot to offer and, and critical and need to be a critical part of, of um, this plan going forward as well and, and shouldn't be alienated in any way, uh, but really uh, celebrated, particularly those that have the passion to help uh, help the town uh, move forward in the world, move forward, quite frankly. Um, I did find that um, um, the conversation did re um, revolve more around building comfort and heating, uh, which actually isn't uh, part of our group. <laughs> it's more on the building side um, and didn't really get, get to the, um, as much to the um, electricity um, topic. Uh, or theme that we needed to, to cover in our group. I, I hope that's sort of more of a focus in the, in the next two um, meet, uh, uh, working groups or meetings. Um, uh, Electricity is a little bit different because um, it's a little bit, it, it certainly has, uh, it's a personal impact as well in terms of how you make your choice about where you get your electricity from and, and whether you can have solar or not, um, both in terms of whether you have the means to do it or how do we provide the means for lower income to do it, but also if, you, if you're not a homeowner, how can you work with landlords and so forth to, to uh, have access to solar um, for those that, that would like. Um, but it's also very much about um, uh, electricity generation that's not in your home or on your home, uh, but how do you engage in community shared solar? Um, I, I think, you know, how do you get to these issues of, um, um, Everybody likes their open space and all these nice places that re Steve referred to. Um, uh, but, uh, and you know, how do we grapple with um, uh, those trade offs uh, associated with, okay, well, where, you know, what, what are some of the, and maybe a conversation with the land use group is, well, where are the lands you don't care about? <laughs> Not the ones you do, uh, but wh where are the ones you don't care about? Uh, that would be um, that more acceptable, uh, like the like, like the landfill, uh, for example. Uh, but now it's a dog park, and <laughs> um, and uh, it's got other plans, I guess. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, uh, we, we got to sort of grip gri uh, grapple with those issues. Uh, I think even with 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 our group on the electricity side, which we didn't really get to, um, 
And um, uh, I, I think we, we um, were teeing up the CCA uh, that, um, uh, and, and sort of decided purposefully not to um, dive into that in our first meet, uh, meet and greet <laughs> meeting. We didn't want to scare anybody, scare anybody away. Uh, so we're teeing that up, uh, or I should say Andra is taking the lead on, on teeing that up, uh, perhaps as some a primer uh, before even the next meeting so that we can sort of dive into it a little bit more with people um, having some, some uh, familiarity with it um, already. So my, I guess my, I, you know, I thought it was really um, well done, really important uh, process uh, but I did find that it it, um, it was when all the when so much of the conversation had to do with heating and air conditioning um, uh, and building comfort um, and making uh, energy efficiency retrofits to the building is like okay this uh, uh, Jesse and, and somebody whoever else is on the building side I hope they were covering that as well but it wasn't it wasn't um, as uh, um, uh, it was a bit beyond. It's important, obviously, <clears throat> to hear that, but um, I think we were tasked with um, uh, it, um, really focusing on some some other is some of the other issues as well. Um. So I will say that the um, comments at the end indicated that um, community leaders felt like we covered a lot of new ground. Um, so I'm glad we didn't dive into the CCA. I think that would be a bit much. Um, I, I have to say that, um, I, I really like the process and the inclusion. Um, but I don't believe that in these three meetings, we're going to get, uh, far enough to, um, get any real decision making done um, with the help of, of the, these community members. Um, and so I'm, I'm really hoping that they'll stick with it and participate in the, the later steps once we've sort of taken these conversations and then research that we're doing um, and boiled it down to our suggestions for what we want to do and, and then get their feedback again. Uh, Andre and Dwayne, um, did anything you learned in that process about what might, uh, some, some of the shape of maybe some of the CCA uh, might be? That was, it, from my perspective, that, that was kind of where it ended up, that that uh, that there was a lot of stuff that's probably useful in what needs to be part of C the CCA process. What do you mean by that, Jim? Well, uh, there were there were sort of three big ahas for me. One of them was if we're talking about building electrification as something that is part of an overall plan, most renters buildings are already electrified. That's not an issue that they need to, that they need help with. What they need help with is rearranging the, the systems to be semi reasonable instead of crazy. Uh, but they're already electric. Um, the, uh, the other thing it was the issue of who has access to the benefits of a CCA process. And that seemed to come up quite a lot. And that that seems like something that is perfectly within the structure of how you define the CCA and what goes on with that. And that it's like, great, this perfect feed in to uh, those discussions, which hopefully, you know, come up at the next meeting. Yeah, I think there, there's some, um, and we haven't really um, broached the CCA in detail with, with this group yeah. yet. So. I think there's two aspects to it. Um, one is just your your basic CCA, where you're automatically opt in opted in to a um, uh, electricity supply that has been negotiated on your behalf by by the um, CCA entity, uh, which for the purpose of Amherst will be green, fairly green, and maybe there was some opt opt up 
uh, opportunities for even even more grain. So I think it do, did um, address, I'm not sure if it was Ghazi Kaya herself or, or one of the uh, people that sort of had all these sort of problems with signing up for a green product from a third party vendor and then had a way big higher bill and couldn't, couldn't, uh, um, couldn't uh, negotiate or, or, or ha have a, uh, um, address the issue uh, well with the electric supplier. And it was a, it was a fiasco, quite frankly, it sounded like. Um, I think to some extent, the CCA will make it easier for these people uh, to access um, greener electricity um, at minimal um, complications. Um, yeah. The other aspect of the CCA, which is more the innovate, the 3.0 3 as we call it, part, part of it, part of it uh, which is really about um, opportunities for the CCA to uh, proactively um, work with the community to 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 um, develop, finance, develop, and potentially own uh, renewable generation and, and and participate in other greenhouse gas reduction, re reducing activities like energy efficiency and so forth. Um, you know, that's where um, we're hoping um, and, and expecting and designing so that those those opportunities are um, accessible uh, across income classes uh, and maybe even purposefully um, in, incentivized for um, lower income uh, classes um, and, 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 uh, and, you know, a, a wide spectrum. Um, uh, but you know that's still a lot of detail that needs to be worked out um, in in the yeah. season. That is that it's definitely um, part of the mission goals uh, agenda of the of the CCA, and you know hopefully that is helpful uh, across the, the 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 spectrum of of uh, constituents that we have. Is that uh, ten minutes, Laura? Yes, that was ten minutes. Thirteen minutes. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll move on to the buildings group. Jesse, you want me to start or would you like? Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, my computer just did something very interesting. <laughs> Sarah, why don't you start then? <laughs> I'll let you pile on at the end. Um, just logistically speaking, I think our, our meeting had a pretty equal mix of members from our group, ECAC and, and Linnaean, and then uh, task group members and community leaders. We had ASL translation, and Jesse and I are both learning how to speak more succinctly for the translator, um, but I don't think that it... I don't think it deterred from our meeting at all. I think I think it it flowed well. Um, I just need to do better. Um, so Jesse set up our conversation, and you can read this in the notes. But um, for us to think about two kind of overriding priorities: um, how do we enhance the quality of life, and how do we reduce carbon emissions? And people were sharing experiences about um, what makes a building better. Um, lived experience in or where they live, where they work, um, what they value in a building when they picture a, a building that um, adds to quality of life as we were, as we set up. Um, and I think two, well, accessibility, actually, accessibility seemed to come up a lot, both in the buildings themselves and then regarding governance and community engagement in this process and then others in town. So accessibility on both sides of that. Um, I think one thing that sticks out in my mind is how accessibility and sustainability might sometimes be seen as conflicting priorities. Um, so building accessibility here. Um, one of the community leaders expressed they've experienced landlords or building owners who are not willing to make buildings accessible because it's not an aesthetically attractive solution or might lower property value. Um, and so I was, I was just learning and hearing that, you know, values for accessible upgrades don't necessarily always line up with values for sustainable upgrades. And what does that mean for people um, who, who need different accommodations to use 
buildings. So that sounded like an interesting opportunity and challenge, marrying those two goals together. Um, and then regarding accessibility as it relates to community participation, um, our community leaders expressed very, very passionate frustration and concern that the end result of our process is a plan that then has to be carried out by the town. Uh, they feel as though town leaders are all talk and no action. We create committees all the time and we like to talk and, and things don't get implemented. Um, so that got me thinking a lot about what our role is as a committee, if any, after the plan is created. What, is that, what does that look like in implementation? Um, you know, Andra mentioned she hopes that community leaders will want to be involved in the later steps, but I'm seeing it more of as how do we make sure that we keep centering our community leaders in the work, you know, as, as the plan keeps moving forward, as it gets passed through um, to various groups to, to keep getting carried out. So how do, we, how do we continue with the level of community engagement and advocacy that we're trying to set up the plan with? Um, that's pretty much all I've been thinking about since the meeting. <laughs> so I'll let Jesse share. Yeah, I, I would say that we I, it cannot understate that, that point. Um, I think I would describe, I thought it was a very positive meeting, but what to me was positive about it was a high level of frustration from multiple people in nuanced ways about the way that the town has let them down in all kinds of ways. Um, and it was, it was, and, and it, I actually resonated with me. Um, I think that, uh, it's hard because I've been thinking about this a lot too. That, and my kind of answer is, well, let's do something bold, and and not let people down, and 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 really come through, and really do something bold. And then I keep coming back to, oh, but we're in Massachusetts, and there's a ton of laws that are really set up to make change slow and difficult, and it's pretty humbling. And I. It was humbling. Uh, and so I, I think the question I would ask to, to this larger group is, what can we do to um, show the people that are watching us and the people that we've asked to help us, to sh what can we do to show them that this is going to actually add up to something? I think some question like that. And then That was one of the primary takeaways. The second primary takeaway was kind of popped in at the end there and it was subtle. There were people that were not complaining and there were people that were mostly quietly listening. And at the end they were like, so what can we be doing to work on this? And it was people who I think have already started working on these issues, particularly with buildings. It's they're in their wheelhouse. They're more sort of activists and experts and stuff and they're and so I, balancing these two things of like, I need, I want to give them tasks to do. And I want, so that was, I don't know if that was necessarily attention, but it was another big takeaway. And then my final point is the ASL interpretation, I think is one of the best things that happened to that meeting. If we had ASL right now in this meeting, I'd be done right now. And you all would know exactly what I said, and I wouldn't have done whatever I just did. And mm -hmm. and I think it was a lesson, and it was awesome. And and so it, that was a huge positive. And I think everything that people said, like, was slow. Like Jim, I've never heard you speak so clearly. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, and I'm not kidding. I really think it was a very cool, and I think a lesson to us to not be like like this kind of. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, back to the question, like how can we, what is the action? Like how can we not let people down? And are we just doing that work and sort of slowly doing it? But I'm nervous, I am nervous about the plan on the shelf. 
So I'd just like to say, Jesse, that I think that everyone is nervous about the plan on the shelf. And that is probably one of the key questions here is how do we not let that happen? And it matters to everybody. I would even flip that question a little bit and offer that we want to think about if we don't want that to happen, what do we want to happen? What's that sustained model of engagement that helps us carry this work forward with the spirit that you all are pointing to right now of engagement at all levels of expertise and, and inclusion and accessibility at the forefront? That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, and I think, um, Sarah, what you said really resonated with me around what do we do as a committee? Um, you know, we're the f first committee out of the council and we're the first group of ECAC and most of us, this is our first committee we've been on. So I think we're all learning about that and I think we can shape that in some respects and we need to shape that. Um, so that's something that I want to make sure we carry throughout this work as well. You're trailblazers. <laughs> Any questions for Jesse or Sarah? I'm, I'm curious um, if you see the accelerator program as something that might um, engage some people who want, you know, to explore more right now. Can you say that louder? Uh, the accelerator program, the building electrification accelerator program could use some more people. So if there's um, some people in, in the group, it, it would be nice if it was, you know, sort of representative, but I, um, that would be a great asset for accelerator team to have some more people. Yeah, I, I'm sure we have at least one or two people who might be interested if if they're not already aware. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I would just, I would throw out one other question. I, maybe just like the, I to ask all the groups was do 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 people have a sense that the that the your guests at the group that were the non ECAC people were felt like it they it was time well spent? Like was that the takeaway? Because multiple people had for us it was like I I don't know if I can give time to this. Like this seems like a waste of time, and and not that they don't think we're trying and they just so i'm did people feel like was that the sense there was positive use of their time yeah why don't we um let darcy and i talk about our group and then maybe we can circle back onto that darcy do you want to kick us off why don't you do that laura okay let me time myself here um yeah, so we were the last last group to go, um, the transportation. I think we had a good good mix of folks. Um, Darcy and I, I don't think spoke at all. I think we really just listened, which um, was great. Um, we had a lot of conversation. There, I don't think there was any times where it felt like it was forced or um, folks didn't have things to say. Um, one of the challenges of our group, which we knew from the beginning, was that it's a bit of a mixture of things put together and does connect through non-building infrastructure, but transportation waste, community health, um, communications, you know, it, it's hard to speak to all those things at one time. So we really focused mostly on transportation, although aspects of health and communication and a little bit of waste did come through. 
Um, I felt like one of the things that resonated with me a lot was um, this feeling that I've had in, in that I think we have a sense of what technologies we need to use, but we don't always have a sense of what impacts that has on different people. Um, and so something that came up in our group, which was news to me, um, was that when folks ride the bus, they only are allowed to bring three bags. And so that really limits people from going grocery shopping or doing, going to the survival center and getting their box or doing things like that on public transportation. Um, and so I think before this conversation, if we hadn't had this conversation, we might have said, all right, well, climate action plan, we're pushing private public transportation and not thought about the fact that that's actually not useful to people that want to use that for all of their transportation if they can't even go to the grocery store. Um, so um, it just highlighted for me the importance of these types of meetings um, and what we're trying to really get, get out of it. Um, I thought that our group were pretty positive. I, I felt that folks, at least the folks on the call that are more sort of um, engaged in other town councils and town meetings. So this is, you know, they, they I've seen them in other things. Um, felt like it was useful and important and they got something out of it as well, which I thought was a positive. Um, so that was good. We did talk a bit about COVID and the relationship between COVID and um, not only sort of short-term kind of reduced bus routes because of students not being here, um, but also the challenges of taking public transportation in the middle of a pandemic um, and sort of some, some challenges that folks have around even carpooling where they used to be able to carpool to pick up survival center boxes and things not feeling as comfortable doing that in the middle of um, the pandemic. Um, so we did have someone from PVPC on our call, which was great. And we had um, Lev, who is Ben Ezra, who's the director of their survival center. And that was helpful because they were able to give um, specific, as someone who grew up around the area and lives in the area and who traveled without a car for a while, was able to give specific personal details as well as sort of details from their experience with their survival center, which was, which was super helpful. Um, anything I, I missed? And a lot of talk, of course, about what, you know, kind of the complete street needs of um, safe places for people to walk, more lighting, um, cycling. Darcy, you have anything to add? Um, I guess I, I felt like um, people were um, accepting of the format that we had um, and the questions that we put forward. And I think um, as Laura said, I think it might be because they, there was a, that there seemed to be a general understanding of what we were trying to do, which hasn't always been clear to me, by the way. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I, I felt like they sort of understood how, how this was supposed to be an introduction to the group, to each other, to the issues in general, to the overview about the different issues. And, um, you know, my impatience about getting to climate action issues, you know, what are we gonna do about this? Um, was not something that we, uh, you know, I think people felt, it felt like it, people were okay with allowing this process to evolve. Um, so, um, yeah, 
uh, it seemed like a, a, a group that is going to be able to work together nicely. Um, we didn't have any issues of translation or interpretation or anything, so it, it, it you know, it moved along pretty quickly. Um, so um, anyway, yeah, that's about all I have to say about it. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know if people will be, will respond with the homework questions and what we're going to do with the answers to the homework questions. How will we use them? Or is it what, you know, what kind of exercise is that? Great. Um, the only other quick thing I'll add just from looking at scanning the notes again is um, I think the section here on sort of connectivity is challenges is a really important one. Um, and one mentioned here that I didn't mention was the sort of access barriers to ec economic mobility that folks have because of our reliance on cars in this region. Um, and so that sort of made me think about the the concepts we we've been talking about from the beginning around like what does a thriving Amherst look like for everyone a low carbon thriving Amherst and I think that's something that will need to be addressed in that model um any questions for Darcy or I or then or else I think we can start to talk maybe about these more bigger picture next steps no um maybe just quickly give the other groups um, a chance to answer Jesse's question around like did folks did you feel like anybody felt like it was a waste of their time or um, indifferent or seemed satisfied my, my sense is that people will be eager to meet again Did, did the people who said it was a waste of time, um, have they indicated that they're, they're going to be coming back? I don't know the answer to that. And I also wanna, I wanna kind of characterize, I, I don't think that was the phrase per se, although those <laughs> words may have been used, but it didn't feel like this is a waste of my time. It was more like, I'm concerned that I don't have time both in hours and minutes, but also emotionally to do this, you know, to put my heart into this and see it. And so I think it was a, it was a more, and so I, guys, I may know uh, if, if our, if our group has changed, but I, that I haven't heard anything about that. The only comment I, yeah, uh, I sorry. go ahead guys. I was just going to say, um, to my knowledge, nobody is not participating after the first meeting. Um, and I would say that um, one thing for everyone to just sort of be aware of as they think about the way that community leaders were sharing is that one of the best things about this process um, is also one of the tough things is that it opens up space for people to share in a way that they feel like somebody who has a little bit of power, I know you guys are clear about, you don't have decision-making power, but um, is listening to them. And for a lot of folks, it's, it's the first time after a series of really trying for a long time. And so the frustration or the, you know, sort of the concern about, is this gonna make a difference? may be more reflective of the the years of experiences building up to this moment in time than this isolated like climate um, ECAC project. So I would maybe encourage people to consider that, you know, this energy not not put pressure on you all so individualized and in the one climate action plan, but um, give us the opportunity to think about um, how to give, give a diverse group of community members access to participation across the board in town um, because there's a desire. Yeah, I think that's really well put, Kazika. Um, 
uh, and I think the in the the building's task group was was probably the bumpiest of the task groups, um, but it was also the setting in which the that it's like some of the key issues really came up, and that you know that's part of the deal. It's like made us uncomfortable. Uh, um, and I thought that was that was great. And you know, John Hornick from the Affordable Housing Trust had really brought up that issue. Uh, um, and uh, and you know, I think he he brought it up in a uh, in a in a way that really set the tone to what you were saying, Jesse. Um, you know, I'm not sure. This is one of those things. Like everybody's language is not fantastic every time. It's like, you know, we've got to be willing to accept how people say things. Uh, and, uh, but I thought it was a great, it was a great comment about, and, and really gets back to Sarah's uh, perspective of, hmm, and this has to matter. We have to do something here. And John's comment was, I don't want to be on an advisory board. I want to be on an, I want to do advocacy. The word he used was he wanted to be an advocate, not an advisor. Mm -hmm. And that was the specific language I think that mm -hmm. Jim's mentioning. Yeah. I also, I just want to say, I am really thought it was a great meeting. Like, I am really glad that this, that people were comfortable enough to say how they really felt. And I think it has seemed very clear to me that understanding that and working with that is our task. Or one of them. I was just going to say that uh, just the one comment I heard again, not a great sample size, but one comment I heard from uh, somebody after the meeting was um, they wish they would have been a little bit more prepared to know sort of what to expect uh, at the meeting. Um, and so maybe we can think about that for the second meeting. Uh, I don't recall whether we, to what extent we sent out an agenda ahead of time. Uh, uh, he, um, he, he, he was just taken. Um, uh, was a little bit surprised with the with the direction and, and scope of the of the uh, conversation, um, and um, uh, you know maybe there's an opportunity to um, in, inform or, or lay out sort of what what sort of the goals and objectives are for e for the for the each meeting and agenda uh, a little bit more explicitly if if that makes sense um, ahead of time. I heard that comment too from one of the participants. Uh, same type of thing and also uh, um, a suggestion that the homework be more directed about climate action planning. Mm -hmm. in, okay. the, in the land use group, I didn't hear any complaints. I, I haven't communicated with anybody uh, who participated after after the meeting. Um, I. Was a little disappointed we didn't have more in the way of farmers involved and so much of the conversation re revolved around using land for recreation and um, uh, value valuing the land in that context not so much as uh, farming or uh, for other resources so with that group I'd ha i trying to imagine how we would go forward i, I it's going to be hard to imagine turning the corner to talk about carbon sequestration or things like where could we put PV arrays that wouldn't be detrimental to these people's minds. Um, and I, I would really like to see more input from farmers. We could talk about soil um, carbon farming, carbon sequestration, and um, forestry practices that can help us with carbon sequestration. So my own thinking was that, yeah, if we were doing a recreation plan, this, would, this was great. This would be a great start on that. If, if we're doing a, um, using lands to suck up carbon, I'm not sure how we're going to get there in three meetings. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a, I think those are two important things that are sticking out in my mind. Um, both what you just said, Steve, and what Andre said earlier, which is like, we, we have three meetings. We're not going to do it all in three meetings. <laughs> So what are we doing for the next two meetings that is setting us up to have a successful 
continuing um, engagement's not the right word, but bringing community members in and moving forward with the plan that also, and then as a committee, how are we ensuring that the plan is actually useful and getting implemented? Um, so with that, I'm gonna move it to Jim and Lauren to <laughs> answer both of those questions immediately. Oh, no problem. <laughs> uh, so I have a, a couple of things to say uh, sort of about those thoughts. Um, and, um, and, you know, I'll, I'll say them sort of concisely and then you guys can bat them around a little. Um, and probably the most important one is that part of this process is uh, to figure out what questions we're answering. Um, and the committee sort of walked into this thinking, we know what the questions are. And I think one of the things we're discovering is that actually we didn't quite know what the questions were. Uh, and, uh, and so that first step process is really, okay, what are the questions we need to deal with here? Uh, and, uh, and I think, in fact, you know, those meetings did a pretty good job of doing that. Um, so I'll stop talking now. Well, I, I was hoping, uh, and, you know, the, the agenda was to come up with principles, um, knowing that we might not get much farther than that um, in these three meetings. And I didn't feel like we got anything concrete, you know. So I, I did think in the next meeting, in addition for us, we're going to introduce this really technical, kind of hard to get your mind around idea. Um, could take half the time. Um, but I, I think we really need to have more structure around. Um, so, you know, what, what are the criteria that this group would want to put on the kinds of projects we would do. Um, I think that makes sense. Uh, um, and I would hesitate to say that no principles came out of that meeting. But one of the principles that came out of that meeting is if people are going to be able to use a CCA structure, it has to work with fuel assistance. That's something we can do. Uh, one, which is not in, imminently obvious in the CCA structure. Just saying, I've now read quite a lot about what's going on with it. Uh, and, uh, um, and one of the other things was the issue of cost and that cost is gonna be a big factor for a lot of people and it's attackable in a lot of different ways. Uh, those are all things that are pretty good, pretty good items to work on within the structure of defining a whole set of sort of renewable and energy uh, functions. Um, I mean, they're not things that are, the, the cost thing is not necessarily new, but sort of understanding the role it plays is probably valuable. Uh, um, the, uh, so, yeah, uh, let's leave it. Let's hold on to next steps for a little bit. Um, I think, Laura, you had a second question. What was the second question? Um, no, I don't think I, I mean, I, I was just sort of summarizing what I heard. So they weren't really questions. Mm. Cool. And I think that there are definitely people who want it to move into the realm of action. And I, I think that people are gonna be excited about that. Um, uh, One of the things um, just, and th this can bring us into next steps potentially as well, but, um, and just noting the time that we have about 20 minutes left. Um, 
one of the things that that I think may be a tangible next step for everyone to do is take the Excel spreadsheet that we got, which is really helpful. It has all of our task groups and all of the previous strategies grouped together. Um, I, I would almost, I almost think we need to add a column there on sort of take notes and takeaways from the, the outreach group of, you know, anything we heard that in, impacts this. So, you know, expanding PVTA, I'm looking at ours, expanding PVA to routes and make them more frequent. Like I would write here, yes, and, you know, figure out the bag limit thing and, and other things that we've, we've talked about, we talked about in our meeting. So I think that would go along, that, that would help make sure that we're translating the information from the notes into our working documents um, so that we're not losing some of this material. Yeah. That could, that could also help with sort of doing the print, sort of figuring out what principles are, are coming out of, of all of this. Absolutely. So let me, let's just real quick talk a little uh, about next, the next steps in the next meetings and then we'll, can back out of that and you guys have your meeting back. Um, uh, um, so our, our sort of after this process, and we sort of had this vision, it's like, okay, well, you know, we do a thing where we set principles, we do a thing where we then talk about strategies, and then we do a thing where we talk about implementation. Um, that does seem, uh, seem ambitious. However, I think people are ready to talk about strategies. And I think that's something that we need to do. And so we're, we're thinking about ways in which to seed that conversation in a way that will generate a, uh, a useful, uh, uh, both conversation and information out of it. Uh, and I think that idea of going through the spreadsheet and, and annotating those uh, strategies is gonna be really useful. And then we might pull a couple of them out for the meeting and to talk about here are the things that we're uh, sort of trying to accomplish. Here's what we heard about um, sort of the principles of how it should work. Here are uh, you know three things that we think would be actions that would support that. Let's talk about those actions. What do they mean? And then are there other ones we want to that we really think are important? And that gets us into that conversation pretty directly uh, in a way that potentially could be really valuable. Um, you know, obviously managing the conversation is part of it. Lauren, does that make sense to you? I mean, this is sort of what we've been talking about. Yeah, I think the way I've been thinking about it is, is applying the principles to some, some of the strategies that are have been elevated or that we have a, a sense are the most important from the group conversation so far and kind of testing that assumption and letting a conversation emerge around that um, but not necessarily going through a laundry list of strategies just using those example strategies again to really pull out the thought processes behind what makes those strategies valuable or or important and what needs to to change in order to make them align fully with the, the principles. So how, how are you thinking of coming up with those? Are the, the team leaders are going to come up with those, stra yep. those strategies? That was your idea. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I, I, I guess I assume that they would look at the list and figure, you know, prioritize that the group would prioritize it. But, but I'm glad to prioritize it. Well, I think, I think we can go. We can start without the prioritization and maybe pick three, two or three on the list that that we already on the list that we already have that ideally came up in some way in conversation and in the first meeting, even if tangentially, and then use that, do that to go through the, and then step after that would be more prioritization 
of all of the ideas would be my sense. It's, yeah. Um, I would um, suggest we try to select um, a representative set of, of strategies, uh, not try to be exhaustive, but maybe some representative ones that really test some of the values that we've um, uncovered or at least explored a little bit in the first meeting. Because as I mentioned before, um, at the end of the day, this is hard because there's hard decisions and um, trade-offs between values um, that, that people have to make. And I, 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 I think it would really be helpful to really stress um, the participants in, and, and have them stretch their own thinking about some of these strategies um, so that we get some sense of, of where these trade-offs um, might be. Again, it's not a great sample size, but, uh, but at least, you know, between um, some of our community leaders, some of the low income, some of the uh, uh, better off to do um, uh, participants of, of where those values sort of meet and, 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 and com compete to, uh, potentially with each other. Uh, because um, I think that's really um, what we need, what, what would be really helpful coming out of this. So we have some basis of putting together some set of strategies for this plan that hears, um, is, is uh, sensitive uh, to, to, uh, to, to how people are, are thinking and, and willing uh, and able to make, make some of these trade-offs. So, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about strategy of let's increase public transportation. Everybody says, great. Uh, but um, uh, but you know that's not the uh, that's not that's not the difficult issue. The issue is well, why does PBTA have a three bag limit? Maybe there's a safety issue. You know, maybe it's it's uh, maybe it's a state law. Uh, who knows? Uh, but it's it's not it's not there. Uh, it, it's there for some reason. It may be a crazy reason, or it may not be. But uh, it's there for a reason. Um, and so, you know, you're going to you're going to give up something if you get rid of that law. It might be public safety or or, or something. I don't know, uh, but um, uh, but that's just a, an example. But I think in any if we can think about these strategies as as really being test cases to stretch the thinking and and uh, and, and really be to some extent um, it, it helpful to be stressful uh, to these participants. You know, really see where the where they're willing to and able to bend uh, on, on uh, competing values. Yeah, I think- Jim, Can I just get a clarifying, Jim, quick thing real quick, Darcy. Jim, you mentioned the, the three meetings, the principles, the strategies. What was the word you used to describe the third meeting? Uh, um, implementation. Okay, thank you. I, I just wanna get that in there, thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say that I I don't think the initial meeting was organized to necessarily be all inclusive of the issues that we might end up thinking are important. Um, and so, for example, in the transportation issue, we really focused on on um, the PBTA, and we did also focus on connectivity with and bicycling and so on. But we never once mentioned um, electric vehicles or electric vehicle infrastructure, which is, I'm assuming gonna be a piece of any climate action plan. So anyway, I'm just saying that, um, that most of our topics probably have four or five main subheadings or maybe fewer, some of them might even have fewer, um, that we could just put out there and, and get people's suggestions as to what the subtopic should be or what, what, what our goals should be under those areas. My take on the land use strategies that are listed uh, in the spreadsheet, they are, ideas that people wrote down on sticky notes or wrote on the paper easels that we had at a couple of public meetings, both in the resiliency meetings that we had a year or two ago, as well as a couple of the meetings that the ECAC has run. So some of these ideas are, are, are there, but they may have been proposed by one person. 
And so these ideas have not arisen collectively. They haven't necessarily even been seconded um, by a second person in some cases. So they're almost, I see them as kind of a hodgepodge of ideas that have come from the people who happen to be there and they've persisted in our list. Um, so I would be a little uncomfortable working with these as the priorities or as, as the strategies that have come up from the town because I don't think they are entirely representative. So we need, maybe need to think of a way of, of getting more ideas or us distilling the list and then bringing that back to town to the community so that people could confirm or disagree and then we refine the list subsequently. I, th I think the list needs more work. Second thing on this list is an awful lot of these things I think probably be handled by committees other than the ECAC, um, food and agriculture or, or green infrastructure, some of the zoning. I think we may want to uh, see if we can find some committees in town that may be able to take some of these projects. Great ideas uh, and maybe they're better positioned to move them forward. Yeah. Um... Steve, good point. And I think, yeah, right now this is still just everything. Um, but what I could almost see happening is if at the next meeting, the next task group meeting, the task group co-chairs together with the consultant team sort of identify two to three representative topics to kind of talk through from a strategy perspective. So, um, then I think before the final meeting, the task group co-chairs and, and, and our group together is gonna need to take that, take those I examples of how we think through strategy around ideas and then apply them to the rest of these lists and, and clean it up and start to focus it in a little bit. Um, and then maybe that's a list that we share with the full group at the third meeting, or maybe it's, we're not even there yet and that's the list we share with we, we do another round or do something else in the third meeting and we share this list, you know, um, I don't think we're gonna sit in these task group meetings and refine this list. I think that's a, the work that, the that we will need to do um, and then share to make sure we haven't missed anything and maybe something we took off the list will come back up in discussion and then that will be a reason why we put it back on the list. But um, there will be some work for us to do we keep, I don't, this, this, this is not ready to share um, with the full group, yeah. Yeah, Darcy. I would also add that um, back in the beginning of this process, uh, Linnaean uh, very graciously shared um, a list of different communities on each topic that were leaders in that area, so those community, you know, what the climate action plans in those communities it, are highly relevant to what we're doing here. Um, and so I, I analyzed transportation and waste because those were under the category of my committee. So I, you know, I'm hoping that we can share that with the group so that they can see, well, I don't know. If we're at least gonna share it with us <laughs> at some point but I don't know at what point the, the, this group is, will be ready to see something like that. If I, were on, if I were a community member in one of these groups, what I would wanna see is an example of what the end product might look like. Um, I would like to see a climate action plan that's like a model, I guess I'm, I'm just thinking what I would want if I were in one of these groups and I um, was told that this was part of our task, that this is what we were helping to, to, to produce eventually. So Darcy, this is Gazit Haya. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna um, say that one um, thing that we're working on for the next meeting potentially is something similar to what you just said you think would be helpful. Um, not so much in presenting a plan from another town, but presenting some examples of ways that um, different organizations or groups of um, 
community members have worked towards integrating um, resilience into um, the work they're doing. And um, we're working on having like a brief presentation for each group of uh, a program or um, a group of people that have already had positive outcomes um, for just that reason, that it's helpful to see a real life example um, and that that can sort of be a counterbalance to um, some of the uh, just not being able to picture things and feeling a little bit doubtful about possibilities if you don't have a tangible example. Um, so for one of the groups, I, I believe it's land use, we're going to have the um, mobile market um, participants uh, do a little presentation. Uh, and, and we're working on other ideas for the other groups for that um, reason that you mentioned, that it is helpful to see something actually um, in real life that would be able to reflect some of the values that we're hoping to hold up in ours. And we want it connected to climate mitigation too, not just resilience. So examples of climate mitigation actions. I, yeah. I, I think that's nice, great to, to have those examples. But, you know, we're supposed to end up with a plan that, that outlines what we're going to do in the next five years to reduce our emissions by 25%. So, yeah, that's, need... that's pretty concrete. Just saying. Right. So, I think... So, what I'm hearing is that those exam... You know, it sounds like you all are, are preparing to, br to bring those examples, which I think is important. Um, agree with Darcy, these to include mitigation as well. Um, and it sounds like we also are going to bring a couple specific actions to road test a bit with the group um, for the next meeting. So looking at the time here, is there, do we know when we're aiming to have the next meetings? Yeah, great question. Um, so we're looking at the last week of August, which is a couple of weeks away um, since vacations are also um, something that we need to consider. Um, I think in all likelihood, um, we can do the scheduling the same way we did last time, where I'll look at all of the, um, the availabilities that everyone's given and come up with a couple of options in the hopes that um, at least one will work for both co-chairs um, and um, set it up with Stephanie from there uh, with the webinar and everything like that. Um, does anyone foresee any issues with the last week of August? You're talking about the last full week of August? or uh, Yes, starts? the last full week of August. So the week of the 26th or 24th, sorry. And most likely an evening again? Um, I will leave that question to Gazit Faya because they have the information about um, which groups have different uh, timing requirements. Gazit Faya? Uh, Gazit Faya's phone uh, call dropped. So oh, probably, okay. uh, um, so she's back on, but. Um, uh, it would be the same, right? Probably as it was before. It might be, you might have to elevate them to be able to speak. Um, but uh, while you're doing that, <laughs> uh, um, what was I going to say? Uh, yes. So the timing, uh, the ones that were in the evening will probably can probably be in the evening again. Uh, so they, one of them, whichever one it was, was during the day. Um, that I'm not remembering That's why that was, but. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, so if that week is problematic, that's probably useful to know. Uh, and that will also give us plenty of time to interact as co-chairs and, and planning to get all the things together we need to get together. And, uh, you know, so the idea was not to be like running through the process, but to actually be able to do the stuff we need to do to get ready for each one. Yeah. Um, 
because we all have stuff. That is only two weeks away. So um, I think that, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming we would have a co-chair and consultant meeting too. Before yeah, the we could either do, you know, we could either do as a meeting or we could do whatever the co-chairs feel would be appropriate. Okay. I mean, we're up for it, but it sort of depends on what you guys feel like. Okay. Okay, so we'll look, Lauren, for information from you on that scheduling. Um, just really quickly, Jim, did you want to say something about this niche engineering? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, so um, at the next ECAC meeting, uh, we're setting up a presentation by niche engineering, who you met I don't know, three meetings ago or something. Uh, um, that team, uh, Isabel Cowbush and uh, her team member. And uh, they are going to talk uh, not super long, but a little bit more in depth uh, about um, uh, sort of resilience, green infrastructure, some infrastructure things that they have, have done, but would be appropriate for Amherst and why. Uh, as a way for the committee to start to understand what those things are, because that seems to be an area that is the, the committee has less expertise in uh, and to sort of try and introduce some of that expertise into the process. I thought that was like a part of the land use infrastructure task group, no? Yeah, the, t the idea, we sort of talked about it a bunch of different ways um, and decided that probably it would be useful, but it might tie into a couple of different groups. And so it might be useful for all of the co-chairs essentially to be able to, to hear that, uh, to bring it into the, to, the, uh, to the task group process. We're also a little nervous about using that much time in the task group process because um, we have kind of limited time. Uh, and to try and make it more efficient by, you know, having the, the ECAC members be able to absorb that stuff, process it, figure out where it fits, and then take it into the, the respective task groups. It's giving you more work, I know. Okay. I, oh, go ahead, Jesse. I wasn't at the meeting where they originally presented. Um, did they talk about uh, carbon at all in that meeting? And if if not, that sounds more. I mean, I I'd be just as happy for them to to send me something to read about green infrastructure. But I'd rather hear about and understand how they the reduction of carbon. If that was going to take up our our meeting time, that that's just my two cents. Yeah, part of the thinking is that uh, in just that way, the committee is heavily focused on carbon and that just providing a little bit of grounding in what is, you know, what are the resilience issues we're talking about here that might be useful uh, in being able to tie, I mean, those things all get tied together uh, and they can certainly talk about sort of the carbon impacts of green infrastructure and some of the carbon impacts of uh, different, uh, you know, infrastructure settings uh, that uh, have been implemented in different settings, like what you were saying, Darcy, about, uh, um, or one of you, Darcy or Andra, um, I'm sorry, about uh, um, electric uh, vehicle infrastructure. Um, I'd be interested, Jim, in um, having that in writing or not in writing is not the right word but like having those specific project ideas written out whether it's in a presentation or just by in words so we can see what they are and how they may or may not already be included in some of our lists and what questions we might have I think having that in advance will be extremely important to make that a oh, great that sounds like a great idea yeah a good good conversation mm -hmm. um so I'm gonna, so, sorry Amber, go ahead and just seconding what Jesse's saying, I'd, I'd rather spend our time 
being able to ask questions. You know, we're pretty fast learners, so I don't think we need to be stepped through a lot. Okay, great. Yep. Um, so I know we, we all need to move on. So um, in terms of next steps, we're preparing for our next task group meeting. Um, I think task group co-chairs should decide amongst themselves if they want to have a meeting with Lauren and Jim and Gazi Kaya and, and everybody um, um, maybe looking for, you know, uh, like you did before a more, a more finalized agenda with some talk, you know, kind of how it will be facilitated, I think will be, will help that. And apologies if you've already sent that and we haven't seen it yet, but, or I didn't see it. Um, and then looking to have the next task group meetings the week of the 24th. So I think we should be open to the idea that potentially if that's the case, we may or may not have our ECAC meeting that week. We'll see where, how scheduling works. Um, but let's stay tuned over email to, to move those forward. Does that sound good? Great. Um, okay, well then I think we should go ahead and, and close the meeting unless anybody else has any last minute things. I just have one thing. I, I was contacted by the Sunrise group uh, today and they wanted an update on what we were doing and um, I don't know whether it's too late for them to be included in our task groups if they want to be, um, but I just thought I would throw that out there. They asked, you know, how can we be involved? How can we help this process? So, you know, I told them I wasn't sure that they could hop on the task groups at this point. Yeah, I think last time we talked about, you know, if there were folks that were not able to come to the first meeting, then maybe we would try to have a one on one conversation with them before bringing them in. So I think the same could apply to a representative from the Sunrise group yeah, here. I could tell them, ask them if they want to do that. Yeah, Which I will do. Great. Okay, um, everybody stay cool. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks, Meeting adjourned. All right. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thanks all.